la ba la ba di di ba da ba di da ya tor nan dam na raja jana dam na
Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 10, Text 26. Nirabidyata Shishno Vai Prajanandam Ritatina Upasta Asit Kamanam Priyam Tad Ubala Priyam Tad Ubayasayam Nirabidyata Shishno Vai Rajanandam Ritatinaha Upasta Asit Kamanam Priyam Tad Ubayasrayam Nirabidyata Shishno Vai Rajanandam Ritartina Upasta Asit Kamanam Priyam Tat Ubayasrayam Nirabidyata came out 
Krishna, the genitals, Vai, certainly, Praja Ananda, sex pleasure, Amrita Aratina, aspiring to taste the nectar, Upasta, the male or female organ, Asit, came into existence, Kamanam, of the lustful, Priyam, very dear, Tat, that, Ubaya Ashrayam, shelter for both. Translation, thereupon for sexual pleasure, begetting offspring and tasting heavenly nectar, the Lord developed the genitals and thus there is the genital organ and its controlling deity, the Prajapati. The object of sexual pleasure and the controlling deity are under the control of the genitals of the Lord. Purport. The heavenly pleasure for the conditioned soul is sexual pleasure, and this pleasure is tasted by the genitals. The woman is the object of sexual pleasure, and both the sense perception of sexual pleasure and the woman are controlled by the prajapati, who is under the control of the Lord's genitals. The impersonalist must know from this verse that the Lord is not impersonal, for he has genitals on which all the pleasurable objects of sex depend. No one would have taken the trouble to maintain children if there were no taste of heavenly nectar by uh, means of sexual intercourse. This material world is created to give the conditioned soul the chance for rejuvenation, for going back home, back to Godhead, and therefore generation of the living being is necessary for upkeep of the purpose of creation. Sexual pleasure is an impetus for such action, and as such, one can even serve the Lord in the act of such sexual pleasure. This, the service is counted uh, when the children born of such, uh, such a sexual pleasure are properly trained in God consciousness. The whole idea of material creation is to revive the dormant God consciousness of the living entity in forms of life other than the human form. Sexual pleasure is prominent without any motive of service for the mission of the Lord. But in the human form of life, the conditioned soul can render service to the Lord by creating progeny suitable for the attainment of salvation. One can beget hundreds of children and enjoy the celestial pleasure of sexual intercourse, intercourse provided he is able to train the children in God consciousness. Otherwise, begetting children is on the level of the swine. Rather, the swine is more expert than the human being because the swine can beget a dozen piglets at a time whereas the human being can give birth to only one at a time. So one should always remember that the genitals, sexual pleasure, the woman the and the offspring are all related in the service of the Lord and a one who forgets this relationship in the service of the Supreme Lord becomes subjected to the threefold miseries of material existence by the laws of nature. Perception of sexual pleasure is there even in the body of the dog but there is no sense of God consciousness. The human form of life is distinct from that of the dog by the perception of God consciousness. Nirabidya tashishno vai prajanan dam ritartina upashta asitkama nam priyam tat ubayasrayam. Thereupon, for sexual pleasure, beginning offspring and tasting heavenly nectar, the Lord developed the genitals, and thus there is the genital, or genital organ and its controlling deity, the prajapati. The object of sexual pleasure and the controlling deity are under the control of the genitals of the Lord. <coughs> so continuing on, uh, this theme of uh, every aspect uh, of our lives, uh, more or less controlled in one way or the other, ultimately by the uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, um, uh, there is a minute independence there, but not uh, all-encompassing independence that uh, we like to think uh, we have. Uh, so this is very much uh, emphasized here in these verses, and uh, going from organ to organ, practically how bound up the conditioned soul is 
uh, especially uh, you know getting the material body, material body and uh, all the organs and so on and so forth. This has been the theme that we've been discussing uh, uh, in this chapter, previous chapter also. Uh, this was explained. And so now we're coming to the position of of uh, the genitals, sex life. Uh, how actually this is originally there in the Supreme Personality of God in spiritually and for the uh, position of the material creation. Here the word praja is used. I think uh, uh, Ram Prashad asked a question the other, the other day about, uh, what was it Ram, the uh, pr prajapati? Uh, what? About envy. Oh, yeah, but was it something about Prajapati, the original seed? You, oh, the original seed. Yeah, the original seed, the Prajap, Praja. Uh, the Sava Jona Sakuntaya Murtaya Sabhava Tatasham Brahmahat. Aham Bita Pratapita, that verse, yeah, that verse of the, the original Praja. The original uh, uh, progenitor, uh, progenitor is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the seed giving father. Of course, uh, uh, now, and we see here uh, all aspects of this uh, form of the Lord, uh, so the different organs, the ears and the eyes and so on and so forth, the genitals, that is there in the Supreme Lord, in the, uh, uh, even in this uh, position. And uh, he is, uh, the, uh, actually, he is the original Prajapati. He is the Prajapati. Sava, John, Sakunta, as mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. But of course, the Prajapati for this world is uh, uh, Lord Brahma, and then he has his his offspring, and they are praja, just like Daksha is very famous for being a prajapati. Uh, uh, Lord Brahma asked him to you know, create uh, so many offspring, uh, which he did. <coughs> so he is uh, for this universe. Uh, Lord Brahma is considered the prajapati, and then he, as I said, he has his offspring that help him. Uh, as far as that's concerned. But they're all under the original Prajapati, uh, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this word uh, uh, is used here, the, uh, the Praja. Um, and uh, and so, uh, uh, so for beginning offspring, but now the offspring, the original seed is the Lord, and for beginning, uh, specifically, of course, the genitals are required, and in every species of life, uh, there are uh, some form of genitals, male and female, and so on. Uh, but originally, they're in the supreme personality of Godhead. So this uh, 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 this is created, and uh, and and of course the the uh, ability uh, to um, engage in this activity is given to the uh, conditioned souls, but there's a purpose, uh, ultimate purpose, especially for the human form of life. Uh, 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 the, the purpose is to give a chance for conditioned souls, as, um, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, Prabhupada explains here, the whole idea of material creation is to revive the dormant God consciousness of the living entity. This word is used here to re rejuvenation, isn't it? Uh, where is that? Yes, uh, the material world is created to give the conditions of a chance for rejuvenation, for going back home, back to God. Therefore, generation of the living being is necessary for upkeep of the purpose of creation. So, uh, re rejuvenation, a very interesting uh, uh, choice of word. Rejuvenation means uh, again giving life. Uh, the, 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 the spirit soul uh, has, uh, has uh, become separate in, in, in his consciousness from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that is an unnatural state. So, so for to rejuvenate the original state, uh, uh, the whole situation of this world is created and the living beings need to come into this world. There's a whole set of procedures uh, uh, under the auspices, ultimately, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, where the living entity uh, can uh, again revive uh, that uh, original consciousness 
of being in, in that uh, natural state of, of uh, uh, um, united, uh, uh, you know, in united in consciousness with the Supreme Personality God, it, rather than being separated, to again become united. And so that, therefore, the whole purpose you know, on the on the uh, uh, um, you know on the macro level, you could say, on that greater level, there's you know there's that um, that ultimate purpose. Uh, uh, and, and so the impetus is there, and one should always try to remember that here. Pro. One should always remember that all aspects of living in the world on the on the greater level, all aspects of living in the world, are ultimately meant to come to that position. And uh, and uh, you know the, the different descriptions were, were, uh, have been given of hearing and seeing and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, each each specific sense and, and the objects of that sense and so on and so forth. Ultimately, there's a there's a you know a, a, a goal that one has to try to uh, attain. So, in in regard to sex life, that of course is con is, is described here as a, a, a heavenly pleasure, <laughs> a heavenly nectar. It is certainly temporary but it's like a heavenly nectar and the impetus there it, it, you know, it is created in such a way as to be like that. Uh, otherwise, uh, there would be no impetus to... Uh, because, you know, living in the mature world is very troublesome. Very, very troublesome. Uh, Devin Ritima, you know, talked about uh, difficulties, you know, when uh, in married life, for example, uh, you know, uh, people come together and uh, there's, a, there's a compatibility uh, issues, so on and so forth. Considerations have to be there, whether you know, one is compatible with the other one. And that also is, is changing. You, know, you, you may uh, be compatible in the beginning, but after some time, issues develop. Uh, people go in, in different directions. You, know, you were in a certain way uh, you know, uh, uh, five years ago, but now you've changed. They've changed, and so you know uh, you you were very uh, had similar interests before, but now you don't have similar interests. So it becomes very complicated. It becomes very complicated, and then you know then there's uh, you know uh, from that sexual union there's children. So just the, the, just to have children uh, is 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 troublesome. Uh, the birth is troublesome to uh, bring up children. It is. Uh, uh, you know, a, 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 the trouble in bringing up children. Certainly very expensive. You know, I remember uh, reading somewhere that uh, um, a long time ago that the, the cost of raising children in this country is, you know, some, uh, some <laughs> calculation was made that over the course of the bringing up a child, it cost, you know, you know $100,000, I forget the actual figures, you know, to bring up a child from a certain age to a certain age uh, when they're older, and when they become uh, independent in their own right and earn their own living, it costs the, uh, uh, the parents a, a lot of money. Of course, you know, I'm not a Greek hustler. I can't say <laughs> directly from experience. But some of you Greek hustlers are looking at me with a smile. <laughs> it costs a lot of money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you have one child and you have two children and three children and so on and so forth, uh, um, you know, it's a heck of a lot of money. There's many verses in the Shastra that describe all this. And uh, so, to, uh, so therefore, it's so troublesome, then, and, and so then, you know, to come together in sex life to have children, if, if there wasn't, a, a, you know, an intense pleasure there, uh, no one would be very inclined to do it. <laughs> so Krishna had to create an intense pleasure as I said, momentary as it is, but still that intense, and it's, it's referred to here as a, a heavenly pleasure. It's like a, a heavenly pleasure. And uh, especially I've read in the Shastras uh, by the Acharyas give their comments, especially for the, the in human life, uh, of course that pleasure is there in all species of life, and that attraction is there. But in human form of life, uh, um, you know, especially uh, Sri Swami comments that, that for a man, a man, the, the, the attraction there especially the, the uh, sense of seeing the female. So the seeing of the female is very alluring for the man. 
and for the woman it's very much the sense of touch, sense of touch. So there are some different acharyas give their explanations of these things, touch, and for a, a, a man it's more sight. Uh, <coughs> indeed, I remember in the olden days they used to uh, uh, catch elephants like like that. They would uh, dig a big pit and then they would cover it. They would cover it with grass and then they would train a female elephant to uh, know, know where that pit is. Come and attract a male elephant, uh, the female elephant would be trained to go in front of the male elephant and then stand in front of the male elephant and whatever she did, wag the trunk or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, then she would go in front of the male elephant, so the male elephant would run after the female elephant. So the female elephant was trained to go around the, around the pit, and the male elephant would run along after the female and fall in the pit, and they, they would capture the, capture the male elephant. <laughs> so this type of, uh, 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 these allurements are there, and, and uh, you, know, you know, arranged by ultimately uh, by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and also the, the deities in control of these types of arrangements, uh, Brahma and other deities, the Pajapatis in this case here, they are somehow or other they're in control of these aspects of the functions of the organs, the objects of the, 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 objects of the organs and so on and so forth. So that's, uh, uh, um, so to, to just to, it's a very, uh, you know, to have the intelligence to under, even under, try, to, try, try to understand all these things is, is a, a, a great endeavour. I want to speak of the, the personality who uh, conceived of all these ways of how things could go on in the material world. Uh, so we're very much controlled. It's, it's, it's there for all, you know, all males and all females, the human forms and in all species of life, uh, somehow or other. Uh, there's that attraction and, and, and bringing up the, the children it's, it's very troublesome. Uh, relationships are very troublesome. Yet uh, uh, the, the, the sex life or, or, or the prospect of the sex life is so really, and the pleasure that's ha to, to be had from it is so strong that one is impelled to, to uh, uh, indulge in that and, 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 and and so it can be very entangling, and generally speaking, especially in the Kali Yuga, conditioned souls are very entangled by the whole thing. And, and there are certainly uh, the, the pleasant side of it, the, the, the heavenly pleasure that is put here, but there are certain, certainly uh, uh, the, the, the sufferings also, great sufferings that come from it as well. Uh, and, and Prabhupada actually comments here that... Uh, uh, you know, if, if one forgets that, that really there's a higher purpose for the whole thing, and, and then, then instead of, you know, coming to a higher level of consciousness by understanding the purpose, even though it's troublesome, uh, but if you understand the higher purpose, and that higher purpose is, uh, of course, uh, having the offspring, and, and, and uh, even, you know, in the act of, the, the, the sex the, uh, the sex act the consciousness of the individual is there in the spiritual God consciousness and then and then when the offspring the children come and then uh, and the Papa puts it interestingly he said that at when when the, the children are, are trained in a spiritual life and in Krishna consciousness then that counts uh, for devotional service he puts it that way, it counts for devotional service. In other words, if one doesn't take that responsibility when the children, or doesn't see it in that way, doesn't see it in that way, and doesn't uh, take up that responsibility of training children in spiritual life, in Krishna consciousness, uh, then it's, uh, it's, it's not on the level of, uh, then it's, one can't remain in that transcendental consciousness. And when one can't remain in that transcendental consciousness, then will, as proper puts it, one will be subject to the threefold miseries of material existence by the laws of nature. The threefold, uh, uh, you know, the Adi Atmic, Adi Baltic, and Adi Daivic, Klesha. And of course, this is all going on under the modes of material nature. Uh, we're very much affected by the mode of uh, ignorance, very much a mode of passion, mode of, uh, uh, to some extent, in, uh, mode of goodness. Uh, mainly in Kali Yuga, it's mode of passion, ignorance. People will be angry, 
uh, people will be envious, jealous, uh, uh, people will be lazy. All sorts of qualities, all sorts of symptoms are, are described for one who is very much under and controlled by the modes of material nature. So when, you, when you're subject to that, it's very difficult uh, to get along uh, with each other. How can anyone get along? It's a, a virtually an impossibility. But the prospect of some, you know, the hope of some sort of pleasure uh, keeps one going. Uh, even though there's a, a, a lot of uh, frustration and, and, and dissatisfaction and suffering. The, the, at least the prospect, the hope of it. And uh, the epitome of that uh, is given here as that uh, attraction to sex pleasure. Uh, and it's a very, very powerful, very, very powerful. So, uh, of course, one can take that up, especially uh, uh, in the grihasta life, or one can uh, and take it up in a Krishna conscious way, or uh, one can become griye shukududama shuddukkam tateshvitam sukadukkam sukavanmanite grihi. One can be like, instead of a grihasta, one can be a griya maybe. Uh, um, so it's a it's a it's a, a decision uh, when one is uh, mm, you know understands a little bit of uh, the, you know the what the greater purpose of of life is and uh, is educated in Krishna consciousness one can understand and make this decision then one one can remain in some sort of transcendental consciousness and not be so affected uh, by the uh, reactions of the uh, uh, the modes of nature, the threefold miseries, and so on and so forth. So then, uh, uh, so what? And then, and then, when one takes up uh, uh, this position, then one has the duty, of course, of, of, of uh, training the children in Krishna consciousness as as, as, as best they can. So, um, of course, later in life, the children will have to make their own decisions of how they want to live their life, so on and so forth. Uh, but at least uh, in, in the early years, uh, you know, the parents have to... It's a prime, prime duty is with the parents uh, to try to, as much as possible, train them. Uh, tra and Prabhupada uses this word, train, to train them in Krishna consciousness. So, uh, um, you know, there's different... Uh, uh, luckily in ISKCON, uh, there's many... Uh, um, uh, there are many devotees who are very experienced. Uh, Prabhupada gave the initial idea how the children can be uh, uh, trained in Krishna consciousness. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, there are many uh, experienced devotees now, uh, you know, how to teach the, the children in, in so many different ways. Uh, you know, many of you, of course, already know. Uh, some of you are, uh, are parents and the grandparents and great-grandparents. <coughs> Someone, a godbrother of mine, was telling me a little while ago, I'm not just a father, I'm not just a, a grandfather, now I'm a great grandfather. <laughs> I'm a great grandfather. <laughs> so my my uh, daughter had a daughter, and her daughter has also got a baby now. So I'm a great grandfather. And he shaking his head, it seemed like yesterday I was getting married. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I'm a great grandfather. <laughs> so many years of experience of uh, 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 how to uh, try to bring up the children as best they can in Krishna consciousness, and it's nice to see and uh, the children, especially you know, when they're young, they've got a natural attraction to dancing and and, and chanting. And I remember when we were in uh, Melbourne, um, I was giving the class, and some of the children were sitting in the class. And, uh, and some of the boys and some of the girls, a little bit older, uh, you know, probably in their early teens, uh, late, uh, you know, maybe 9 or 10 or 11 or 12, and were sitting in the class, and I just noticed they were taking, they were taking notes. They were taking notes. And then, uh, <coughs> and at the end of the class, uh, some of them uh, asked questions, and <laughs> amazing questions. I was talking to Prana was in the class, and Prana, I was talking to Prana after the class. And, and actually, after, when I came out of the class, one of the mothers came over and, and said, this is what my, my daughter took notes during your class, and these are the notes. And, and, and uh, you know, I didn't have anything to do with it. We, uh, we trained them how to take notes. 
in the class because for, for children it's a little bit hard to sit there and, and listen to you know Krishna conscious philosophy and so therefore we've trained them how to take notes listen to different points and how to take notes on those points so the young girl was showing me she was probably nine or ten or eleven or something like that she showed me a whole page full of notes on my class and I was looking through them and said oh yeah I can't remember I said that point <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I said, oh, I said that. Oh, okay. <laughs> and she had like a whole page of notes. And, and, and uh, another one in there asked this very, uh, 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 you know, uh, very uh, 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 kind of a high-level question. And uh, she did. She wasn't prompted by her mother or anything like that. Her mother was sitting in the back. She wasn't prompted by her mother. She asked it herself. So one of the girls and one of the boys asked a very nice question also. Very, very intelligent questions uh, that I had to think very, very carefully how to answer that question. <laughs> and this is an 11 year old. <laughs> and so, just the nature of our, the, the question showed she understood the subject very well, because you can't ask a question like that unless you understand something of it. So, I said, that, and, uh, and Prana was saying, and who is the, one of our <coughs> experienced educators, Prana was saying, oh, these children are so intelligent now, uh, we, we're seeing that they're, they're, they're so sharp and uh, understanding the Krishna conscious philosophy. So the training can be there on all levels, uh, just the, 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 you know, the parents have to be a little innovative. And of course we can't force, you know, I've seen over many years that when you try to force the children, it, uh, it's not very good, they, they tend to pull away from that. But you know, you have to try to make it uh, attractive. And, and, and come up with uh, ways how to train the children in Krishna consciousness. And, and if one is in, in that mindset, uh, uh, then, as Prabhupada said, then one can, uh, he actually says, uh, one can beget hundreds of children and, 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 engage, and, and enjoy the family life in a Krishna conscious way. Uh, um, so that, that is, a, that is a, the, and, and that gives the living entities who are coming in in, in in the form of the children. Uh, um, <clears throat> and we hope, you know, I'm looking at uh, the children running around here and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, <clears throat> I'm going to be probably coming back as one of these children. <laughs> I hope uh, the, the parents are treating them very nicely <laughs> because I'm going to be one of them. <laughs> so, uh, um, so, uh, in uh, and so, uh, the, the, especially in the human form of life, uh, the whole idea of matriculation is to revive the dormant God consciousness of the living entity. In forms other than the human, uh, a sexual pleasure is prominent, but without any motive for service for the mission of the Lord. And of course, Prabhupada gives the example, uh, just like the swine or the pigs, they can have so many children. Uh, dogs also, uh, they can enjoy sex life, but they have no concept of God consciousness, spiritual life, Everything, anything like that. Uh, so, uh, but the humans have that uh, uh, um <coughs> ability to understand it. So, um, um, so one who does that, then Krishna becomes very pleased by these activities, and it actually attracts the attention of the uh, supreme personality of Godhead, and. Uh, um <coughs> In, uh, in one verse, Ye tu savani kami maya sanyasa matpara ananyano but yogina mam jayantu upashate. It is said that I am the swift deliverer uh, uh, from the ocean of birth and death for those who have given all their activities unto me and who are devoted in me without deviation. I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. And Prabhupada comments in the purport there that it's very easy to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One can do their occupation and at the same time just engage in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He puts it very simply in that way. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. And then he says such chanting and engaging in devotional service attracts the devotee to the Personality of Godhead and attracts the Personality of Godhead to the devotee. Uh, 
Balam Balam Samchaham Kamaragava Vajra Dhamma Vidudu Bhuta Tamusmi Bharatashva. So therefore, Krishna says that these activities, sex life, uh, I am sex life that is not contrary to the religious principles. I am the strength of the strong, uh, devoid of passion and desire. So you can read in the Bhagavad Gita all these verses where Krishna says like that. Uh, and Prabhupada comments on the strength of the strong, devoid of passion and desire. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Prabhupada says like in, in strength, and, <coughs> and when it's used in Krishna's service, when it's used to protect uh, others, not for one's own self-aggrandizement or to lord it over others, <coughs> but it's used to protect those who need protection and so on and so forth, and used in the service of Krishna. Then I am that strength. And the, the, when the sex life is used uh, in, in, according to the Dharma, then I am that sex life. I am that sex life. So then by that, one actually becomes more Krishna conscious. Uh, so it's a great responsibility, uh, uh, but uh, you know, if one keeps that consciousness, one can attain uh, the topmost level of Krishna consciousness. So, uh, uh, of course, that, that attraction, male and, 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 and female attraction, is ultimately there in the, uh, uh, the divine couple of Radha and Krishna. Uh, there's that divine in transcendental attraction, and especially Radharani, her attraction to Krishna and her feelings of love for Krishna are the topmost level of Mahabhava. Now, technically speaking, there's a level of bhava, it's called Adiruddha Mahabhava. There's, a, there's bhava and there's Mahabhava, technically called Adiruddha Bhava or Mahabhava. Uh, where, and this is uh, described in uh, Nectar Devotion to some degree and other Shastras also, that the emotions, transcendental emotions felt there on this level, that can only be felt <coughs> by the gopis of Vrindavan. And there are different uh, uh, categories or, 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 or divisions of, of this Adiruddha Mahabhava. And, and, uh, and one level is called uh, Mohana and another is called Madana. Mohana level of, of uh, this Adiruddha Bhava is only felt by the gopis associated directly with Radharani. And then there's a more higher level which is felt only by Radharani herself. This is called uh, uh, the uh, Madana Mahabhava, sometimes uh, uh, Madanaikya Mahabhava. And, uh, and this is only felt by Radharani. This is the topmost level. So that attraction in its topmost form is felt between Radha and Krishna. And then from Radha and Krishna, the attraction is felt in different ways uh, on different levels. And, and it's reflected, of course, in this material world, uh, and, and, but of course uh, uh, it is somewhat uh, 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 perverted and, and instead of being the divine love it, in the conditioned stage, it turns to, uh, uh, instead of love, it turns to lust, where you know, people go into relationships uh, for just uh, really in, for, a self, for selfish reasons. Uh, so ultimately it's there, in, and my point is, ultimately it's there in Radha and Krishna, and that's actually why it exists in the material world. So if we can again come to that level of understanding the purpose of coming together in union, male and female, having children, then we remain in divine consciousness. Uh, and we develop divine consciousness. Uh, we see... Uh, uh, Acharyas like Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he had many children, I think he said t- he had ten children. And, uh, and uh, so they had many children, but they were, you know, his, his level of Krishna consciousness was very high, even though Grihastha, uh, uh, his son, his son Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, was a brahmachari and later on a sannyasi. Uh, but I think that there was one, he made a statement like that, if I could, uh, if, 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 what was that statement he made? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Even he said like that. He was a Naishtika Brahmachar. Uh, even he said like that. Uh, so, uh, so, it's a question of consciousness, and this is uh, 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 um, a very nice verse here. I'll just read it again. We've got a little time for um, <coughs> questions. Nirabhidyata shishno vai 
Prajanan dam ritarti na upashta achit kama nam priyam tat uba ubayasprayam. Thereupon, for sexual pleasure, beginning offspring, offspring and tasting heavenly nectar, the Lord developed the genitals, and thus there is the general organ and its controlling deity, the Prajapati, the object of sexual pleasure, and the controlling deity are under the control of the genitals of the Lord. Does anyone have a question or comment? <laughs> you want to say <laughs> you are quoting on that verse Depends on the uh, the nature of the uh, the person, you know, uh, where, you know how they want to go. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, if uh, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta was in a certain uh, and uh, he was in a certain ashram, and it was his nature to be like that, but he was prepared. If, if asked by a higher authority, um, uh, he was uh, prepared. But uh, uh, but getting the Krishna conscious children that is the, that is the point. And that, that's how you can have a sex life according to the Dharma. Any other comments or questions? Jai, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Go Feminine, Hari Hari Go.